Hi, and welcome to this yoga practice. This practice is called Stretch and Relax. It's a head to toe practice suitable for almost all levels. The only prop you may need is a block. So if you have a yoga block, grab that and place that somewhere within reaching distance. And then roll out your yoga mat and we will begin. To begin this practice, we're gonna start in child's pose. So make your way into child's pose. With arms stretched out, hips sitting back on the heels. Taking a moment to settle in here, you can have knees close together or wide apart, that's your choice. But give yourself a, check, a chance to check in with your breath. Starting to slow the breath down. And as you connect with the breath, mindfully shifting away from anything that became before this practice or anything that may come after so that you can be fully present as this practice unfolds one breath at a time. And we'll stay here for one more centering breath. And then when you're ready, make your way into tabletop. Setting up into tabletop position, we're gonna flow three cows and cats with the breath. When you're ready with an inhale, let that inhale arch your back down, lifting the chin, lifting the tailbone. And as you exhale, round the back up, tucking the chin, tucking the tailbone. Let's do that two more times with an inhale, arching the back. And with an exhale, rounding. Seeking somewhere around a five second inhale and a five second exhale. Enough time to feel what you're doing while you're doing it. And then make your way back to a tabletop and we'll move into hip circles. With an inhale here at the top, as you exhale, drop your hips over to one side, circle the hips back and around and inhale up the other side to complete the circle. We're gonna do that two more times, exhaling hips over to the side, circling back and around, gently moving through wrists, shoulders, hips, and knees, inhaling up the other side. And one more time, circling around, and inhaling back up. And then pause at the top here and we're gonna reverse the direction. So inhale again here, and as you exhale, drop the hips to the other side, circling back in and down. Inhale up to complete the circle. And two more times. Gently moving through wrists and shoulders, hips and knees to start to warm up the joints. Moving slowly and mindfully. Listening to your body at any time. And then pausing back at the top, let the hips sit back to child's pose arms stretched out. And from here, walk your hands over to the right, placing the left hand on top of the right, letting the head rest between the arms, taking a deep breath, side stretch. Let the inhale fill up the lungs, helping stretch the inside of the ribs as well as the outside. We'll stay one more here on this side. And then walk your hands back center and over to the other side stretch. Right hand moves on top of the left, right side of the body open, taking a deep breath here. Feeling that breath moving all the spaces underneath the ribs, starting to let go of tension and tightness. One more. And make your way back center to child's pose. From here, we're gonna move into mini sun salutations. And to do that, with your next inhale, let that inhale take you up to a tabletop position or a modified cow pose. As you exhale, lower your chest down, point your elbows back, preparing for cobra. As you inhale, roll the shoulders back, lift into cobra, right out of the top of the head to not crimp your neck. 
As you exhale, release back to the floor. Inhale into tabletop. And exhale back to child's pose. And that's one mini sun salutation. We're gonna do it two more times. With an inhale to tabletop, maybe a little arch if you like. Exhale to the floor. Inhale for cobra. Draw the shoulders back, open the chest space. Exhale, release it. Inhale to tabletop. And exhale back to child's pose. One more time. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, belly down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, tabletop. And exhale back to child's pose and pause for a breath here. Next, we're gonna extend out onto our bellies. From here, we're gonna set up an inner side of the thigh stretch as well as a quad stretch. We're gonna start with a quad stretch. Feel free to fold your arms underneath your chin or forehead to rest your head down. And then bend your right leg in and reach back for right foot or ankle, drawing that heel down towards your hip. From there, gently press your hips and thighs into the floor with a little glute engagement. Just gently press down, you'll feel that release the hip flexor a little bit more. Taking a deep breath here, seeing if you wanna draw that heel in a little bit more. Managing the intensity of the stretch as it suits you. And then we're gonna release that foot and you're gonna bring the right leg up to a right angle for a half frog posture. Knee is bent, knees in line with the hip and knees aligned with the ankle. If that does not work for your body, adjust for your body but take a deep breath and try to soften through the hips. Let them sink to the floor, creating space on the inside of the hips. This is stretch and relax. We wanna take our time in these poses. We wanna move slow and mindfully, keeping a relaxed energy throughout the whole practice. And then we'll extend that leg back out and switch over to the other side. So bend your left leg in Reach back for foot or ankle. Gently draw the heels down to the hip. On that next breath, mindfully press the hip bones and the thighs into the floor. Stay and breathe, adjusting the intensity as it suits you. Always asking your body if it wants more, less, or completely different and honoring your body's request. One more breath here. And then release that foot down and we'll slide the left leg into the half frog. So the left leg comes up to a right angle, taking a deep breath to soften through the hips. Let's stay one more here. And then release that leg back out. From here, bring your hands underneath your shoulders. Shoulders roll back and down. With an inhale, lift into Cobra. Little back stretch here. Exhale, release back out. Inhale to tabletop, preparing for downward facing dog. Curl the toes under and let that exhale lift you to downward facing dog. And then pause there, making any adjustments for your body. I'm gonna center myself on the mat a little bit more. Feet are about hip distance apart and parallel to one another. Taking any gentle movement that feels good to your body, maybe pedaling the heels or shifting the hips, settling into something comfortable, mindfully lengthening the spine, gently stretching through the back of the legs. We'll take one more breath here and then we're gonna move into low flow salutations. So with your next inhale, let that inhale float you to tabletop. As you exhale, lower to the floor. With an inhale, come into Cobra or Up Dog if you want a little more stretch with just the tops of the feet on the floor. Exhale back to the floor. Inhale to Tabletop. 
and exhale back to downward facing dog. That's a low flow, about a level up from the mini sun salutation. And we'll stay in pause for a minute again. A lot of tension tends to live in the hamstring muscles. It's always worth giving a few extra moments to allow that to release. And use the exhale. When you're breathing in yoga, as you exhale, that helps you release. Inhales bring in energy, exhales release it. One more breath here, and then we'll low flow again. Inhale to tabletop. Exhale, lower into the floor. Inhale for cobra. Doing these flows to keep the energy moving. Exhale to the floor. Inhale to tabletop. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Pausing again for a moment. Releasing tension and tightness. Taking your time, using your breath. And one more time with that low flow. Inhale to tabletop. Exhale, belly to the floor. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, release it back to the floor. Inhale to tabletop. And exhale back to downward facing dog. And then drop back to tabletop and we'll set up the next pose. From here, you're going to extend your right leg straight out to the side. And you can rest down on the bottom of the foot and we're gonna move a flow here. So right leg is extended straight out to the side. As you inhale, sweep the right arm up, twisting at the waist, gazing up at the hand reaching up. As you exhale, lower that hand and reach underneath, the left arm scooping through that arm. You'll feel a nice stretch in the inside of the leg. And we're gonna flow, so stay with the breath. Inhale, sweep open. Exhale. Roll through. One more time. Inhale, open. You can flex the wrist, get a little stretch through the hands and fingers. And exhale, roll through. Now place the hand back underneath the shoulder. Extend that right leg straight behind you and flex the foot. Then drop the toes over to the left, planting the toes down, heel stays high, so the foot's straight up and down and then curve your body over to the left to look back at the heel. You'll feel this open, that outside of the body. This is a C curl. We'll hold it for one more breath. And then return back center to tabletop. Here we'll flow one cow and cat to make sure we're nice and aligned and centered. Inhale for cow pose. And exhale for cat. Float back to a flat back and we'll set that up on the other side. So left leg is gonna extend straight out. Left arm is gonna scoop up or sweep up with an inhale, flexing the wrist, spreading the fingers, opening from the heart to the fingertips. And then as you exhale, reach underneath the right arm, pausing there so you can feel the inner thigh stretch of the left leg. And two more, big inhale. Take your time, still seeking around that five second inhale and five second exhale. Good, one more. Inhale. And exhale. Good. And then hand goes back underneath the shoulder. Left leg extends behind you and flex the foot. Drop the toes over to the right, plant the toes down, heels high, shoulders slide back, and then curl around to gaze back at that heel. You'll feel the whole left side of your body now open. Take a breath. Feel anything that's tight, release. And then we'll bring that knee back to tabletop. We'll flow one cow and cat here with an inhale for cow. Exhale for cat. Then inhale back to the tabletop, preparing down dog, curl the toes under, and as you exhale, lift for downward facing dog. Pausing here for a moment, taking a breath. And then when you're ready, we're gonna drop down to the knees. We're gonna rise into a kneeling position, and I'll turn my body forward to the camera for this. 
and we're going to set up gate and half circle. We're going to start with the right side. So from this kneeling position, extend your right leg straight out to the side with toes and knees pointed up. Now you can relax that foot into a bit of a point or you can keep it flexed. That's going to be your choice here. Then the right hand goes down, left palm turns up and moving into gate pose, lift up and over. You can allow that right hand to slide down and if you did gather your blocks, you can use that on the inside of your leg for extra support. I'm going to choose not to do that. I'm just going to rest on my leg. And you can turn your body slightly, rotating the heart up, gazing into the arm, reaching up to feel even more opening through the side body. And then the rest of the work is with the breath. Let the inhale help create that space. And exhale, let go of tension and tightness. Okay. We'll stay one more breath here in gate pose. And then we're going to flip this over into half circle. So your left hand now is going to reach out to the left side, right arms following along, plant the left hand down, reach up and over. Now this top leg, the right leg, will roll forward here so toes and knees point forward. This way the whole side of the body is open. And you can roll again, slightly rotating the heart up towards the ceiling, lifting and looking into the arm, reaching up. Taking a deep breath here and enjoying this side stretch. We're letting go of a lot of tension and tightness around the ribs, which helps us take deeper and fuller breaths. We're moving slowly, mindfully, keeping that relaxed energy for stretch and relax. And then we're going to ease our way back up to kneeling here. And we'll take two upper body releases from here. Interlock your fingers, turn your palms forward, and with an inhale, press forward as you tuck the chin and round out the back. So you're inhaling, filling up the lungs, helping that stretch under the shoulder blades, and then as you exhale, release it. Then we'll set up a complementary pose to that. Hands come to the low back, I'll turn to the side so you can see it, and go on to the low back. Shoulders roll back and down, and with an inhale, lift the heart, gently draw shoulder blades together, Lift the head back right out the top of the head so you're not crimping the neck. And then slowly back up. And now we'll do gate and half circle on the other side. So left leg extends out for gate pose with toes and knees pointed up. Left hand goes down, right palm turns up, reach up and over. Taking a deep breath, allowing that release through the side body. Maybe a little roll of that body, gazing up. That foot can be pointed, it can be flexed. I don't think you need to see it, but I'll make sure you can. And then be here, taking your time, noticing where you feel tension and tightness. So much of the mind-body integration of yoga is being aware of what you're doing while you're doing it and responding to that awareness. If it's tight, slow the exhale, soften through the exhale. And then when you feel ready, we'll flip this into half circle. So now right hand reaches out to the right, left leg rolls, toes and knees point forward, left arm sweeps up and over, palms facing forward. Get that whole side body stretch. Nice little arc to the top of the body. And you can also, again, roll your body a bit, gazing into the arm, reaching up if that feels good to you. One more breath here. And then we're going to ease our way back up to that kneeling position and repeat those upper body stretches. So interlock your fingers, turn your palms forward, take a big inhale, and then press forward. Stay here for the inhale because the inhale was supposed to be in the pose. Good. And then let the exhale release you out of it. Hands come to your low back. Shoulders roll back and down. Lift up. Heart lifts up, head gently reaches back, but also out the top of the head to not crimp the neck. And then back up to a neutral posture. Good. Back to tabletop. Take an inhale here. And as you exhale, lift back to downward facing dog to release the back of both legs again. Pausing here for a moment, taking a breath. 
From this posture, we're going to be moving into a low crescent lunge. We're gonna step the right foot forward up by the right wrist. Now I know not everybody moves seamlessly to that position, so feel free to make any adjustments to get up into a low crescent lunge. And then bring that foot in so it's right aligned with the hip. From here, sweep the arms up, settling into a low crescent lunge. Hips sink down, spine lengthens. Taking a couple deep breaths to feel that stretch on the hip flexor of that back leg. You might also feel a stretch through the hip on this front leg. Taking a nice deep breath, and we're gonna add on a twist here. So dropping the arms down shoulder height, bring your left hand over your right thigh, wrap your right arm behind you. Shoulders are softened down and gently twist at the waist looking over your right shoulder. Spine is nice and centered and aligned. Chin's parallel to the floor. Taking that twist as you're still easing into that crescent lunge. It's just a nice addition to add a bit more sensation to this pose, a little bit more head to toe work, full body work. We'll stay for one more breath here. And then when you're ready, we will return back center, taking an inhale, reaching, centering our posture. Hands come down inside the front foot and we'll set up for a runner's lunge. So toe heel that front foot out till the toes tap off the mat, but the heel stays on. Curl the back toes under and lift through the back leg. Now, if you do not prefer to have your back knee off the floor, drop it back down. If you wanna add a little bit more sensation here, you can bring your right hand up to the thigh, take a twist. I like to offer options because everybody's different. Sometimes the body wants more, sometimes less, sometimes completely different, and please honor that for yourself. Wherever you want to be here, we'll stay for one more breath. And then we'll start to ease out, drop the knee, toe heel that foot back in line, hand comes outside the foot. We're gonna make our way back to a downward facing dog. So step to down dog, get there as you need, but allow that centering posture. And we're gonna do a low flow here to make sure everything is aligned and centered. So when you're ready, inhale into tabletop, exhale the belly to the floor. Inhale for cobra or up dog. Exhale, release it. Inhale to tabletop. And exhale back to downward facing dog. And from here, we'll move into crescent lunge on the other side. So the left foot now steps forward. The right knee drops down. Taking a moment to align that front foot, knee with the hip, and then we'll sweep up. Hips are gently sinking down. Spines lifting out of the hips. Nice deep breath. We'll add on the twist here. Arms open wide. Right hand reaches over left thigh. Left arm reaches behind. Shoulders are softened down, taking that twist, looking over the left shoulder. Lots of space across the chest. We don't want to collapse into the chest here. Chin's parallel to the floor, so the whole spine is nice and straight. We're simply giving it a good ring out, ring out of the nervous system. One more breath here. And then we will unwind back center, give a centering stretch here. And then bring your hands down inside the front foot. Toe heel that front foot out, so toes tap off the mat, but the heel stays on. Moving into runner's lunge, curling back toes under, lift through that back leg. Nice long spine, hips are sinking down. Adding in any of those other adjustments, knee can come to the floor, hand can go up on the thigh of the left leg, twisting into that leg. Whatever feels right in your body. We'll stay a moment more to stretch and again, with the energy of relaxation, so mindfully taking those five second exhales, letting that tension and tightness you feel soften and release. 
And then when you feel ready, we'll drop that knee back down. Toe heel back in line. Make our way back to a downward facing dog. Pausing there to settle in, feeling alignment. And we'll low flow one time. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, belly to the floor. Inhale for cobra or up dog. Exhale, release it. Inhale to tabletop. And exhale to downward facing dog. The next pose we're going into is pigeon pose. We're gonna start with pigeon on the right, bringing the right knee up behind the right wrist, lower legs moves forward, and then lower down onto that hip, that front hip. You can slide the left leg back, but be mindful that it's in line with the hip. You can relax the foot down. Shoulders are soft and down, spines aligned. Keep those toes curled under if you like that leverage. And then from here, you can stay here and get a nice stretch. If you wanna add a bit more, you can walk yourself forward, reclining into this posture. You can split the difference by bringing in a prop, a pillow, a block, something, and bringing yourself halfway up, just so you can let go more through the upper body and relax and surrender into this posture. Taking a deep breath here. Now, if pigeon is not in your body's practice, you can always flip it upside down and get the same stretch. So you would roll over onto your back whenever you're up for the pigeon pose. That same front leg just crosses over the other leg and you bring it in. That's called figure four. Essentially, it's the same work as the pigeon pose. Let's stay for one more breath. And then we're gonna bring ourselves back into a downward facing dog. So steady your hands down, stepping back into the down dog. And we'll low flow again to make sure energy is flowing smoothly in and out of all spaces and we're aligned. Inhale, tabletop. Exhale, belly to the floor. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, release it. Inhale, tabletop and exhale back to downward facing dog. Hope for the downward facing dogs are feeling better as we've done a few now. We'll head over to pigeon on the other side. Left knee comes forward and aligns behind the left wrist. The lower leg comes forward. Depending on your flexibility, it's either gonna be angled or parallel to the front edge of the mat. I don't have that range in my hips, so I'm at an angle but the heel is underneath my opposite hip bone so that everything is pretty much lined up good. And then again, from there, you can stay propped up. You can walk yourself out. You can split the difference, giving yourself a little bit of a lift. Whatever you like, we'll take that moment to release that outside of the hip. Bodies hold tension throughout, head to toe, but there's certainly key areas that hold a lot more. Part of it is because they're larger muscle groups, but also just because energetically that's where certain energies, especially emotions, live. And the outside of the hips can hold a lot of energy. Let's stay for one more breath here, allowing this pose to do its job. This pose designed to let go of that tension and tightness in the outside of the hip. We want to give it time to do that. And then we'll ease back to that downward facing dog. So when you're ready, step back to the downward facing dog. Taking a moment here, we're going to go most of a low flow, not all the way through. So inhale to tabletop, exhale belly to the floor, inhale into your cobra, Get a nice little stretch, but then exhale back to the floor. Yay, floor. And we're gonna move into locust pose. And the locust pose variation that we're gonna do for today's practice, for this class's practice, is called crisscross X. And the way to do that is to extend your arms out the top corners of your mat and your feet out the bottom corners of your mat. Head and neck are in line. 
And then when you're ready with an inhale, you're gonna inhale and lift your right arm and your left leg. Hold through the inhale and exhale, release. With your next inhale, lift left arm and right leg. Stretching out through the fingers and the toes, lengthening as you lift and exhale, let go. With the next inhale, we're gonna lift all four corners, lifting up through both arms, both legs, and then release. We're gonna go two more times. Inhale, right arm, left leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, all four corners. Exhale, release. One more time through. Inhale, right arm, left leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, left arm, right leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, all four corners. And then exhale, release, folding your arms in, turning your toes out and your heels in, taking a moment in crocodile pose. Now feel free to rest your forehead down. I have to keep my body up a little bit because I am wearing a microphone and it hurts if I lay all the way down. So I'll stay prop, but just take a moment. Whenever we're practicing, it's a combination of effort and ease. We have to have that effort or we don't draw out any of that tension and tightness. But we want to make sure we do pair it up with ease. So that locust pose brings in energy. It adds energy, it adds strength. We want to make sure we take a moment and create that balance from effort to ease. Crocodile pose, great easeful pose to follow any locust sequence. And then from here, we're going to bring ourselves back to a tabletop. We're going to take an inhale with the tabletop and then as you exhale, round into a cat pose. From here back to a tabletop and then let the hips sink down into child's pose. With arms stretched out here, take a moment relaxing in child's pose. And then from here, you're going to bring your palms together, palms together, elbows drop to the floor, bend at the elbow and point the fingers down towards the tailbone. You'll feel a nice stretch through the tricep. If you want more for the shoulders, bring your hips up over the knees a little bit, keeping the elbows down, bending at the elbow, pointing the fingers back, and then gently let the heart melt down towards the floor. This is a wonderful release for triceps. Moving the hips up brings it more from tricep all the way into the shoulders, which can feel good, but listen to your body. One more breath here. And then relax the arms down. Sit back into your child's pose. And when you're ready, bring yourself up and we're gonna come over into a seated position. Sitting down on the hips, extending the legs straight out in front of you. We're gonna set up for a forward fold extension and twist sequence. So starting with your legs stretched straight out in front of you, we're gonna bring the left leg in so the foot's against the inner side of the right leg. Right leg is still extended out, toes and knees are pointed up. Tailbone's rooted down or mindfully centering the posture. With an inhale, sweep up, and as you exhale, reach out over that leg, coming into a single leg forward fold. Now here, you wanna feel the tailbone gently draw backwards as you extend the body forward. And as you breathe, you can inhale, making that lengthening tailbone back, spine forward, and as you exhale, you can let the heart melt over the leg. So we're working with both lengthening and deepening this stretch. And we'll stay for a couple breaths here. Now I have, I'm a top long person, so I have extra upper body to be able to reach super far out. Um, I actually have very tight hamstrings, so it looks like I don't, but I do. Um, if you cannot reach that foot, you put your hand wherever they are. If you have a strap or a belt or something, you can also lasso that over the foot. But wherever you wanna be, this is my comfortable range here. We're gonna stay for about one more breath. And let that exhale 
inhale and exhale. See if you want to add just a bit more lengthening and deepening. And then bring yourself back upright. Right leg is extended out. You're going to bring your left hand behind you, fingers point away from you, and plant that hand down. Right arm extends out over that right leg. And when you're ready with an inhale, we're going to lift the hips up, reach up and over, opening the front side of the body. Taking a deep breath here, hips lift up, heart lifts up. And then when you're ready, slowly lower yourself back down, bringing your left knee up. Right leg is still extended out. Left knee comes up. You can place that foot on the inside of the leg. You can cross it over. Um, when we get into this, you might feel like you have a preference on one. Listen to that. So knee is pointed up. Right arm wraps around that knee and hugs that knee and That's going to help you keep a nice straight spine. Left hand is still behind you. And gently take that left twist. So you're twisting over to the left, looking over your left shoulder. Spine is nice and straight. Space across the chest. We don't want to collapse in and twist a crooked spine here. So we want to stay aligned as we take that twist. And then breathe. Always breathe. But let the inhale fill up. That'll add an extra little stretch. And the exhales again help you let go of tension or tightness that got drawn out. We'll stay one more breath. And then unwind. Back center, we'll repeat that on the other side. So the right foot comes in on the inside of the left leg. Tailbone's rooted down, spine's nice and centered. Inhale, sweeping up, reaching up, and then out. Grabbing on wherever is right in your body and working through those energies. So as you inhale, we're lengthening. Tailbone's drawing back, upper body's coming forward. And as you exhale, let the heart melt over your leg. You don't want to drop the head and round in and squish some of the chest and back and spine. You want a nice lengthening so the energy can flow really well. And all yoga is active. Even if you're surrendering, you're still actively surrendering. There's no passive yoga. You don't want to get distracted and just bump into a posture. You want to stay engaged. That's where you're going to get the benefit and also prevent any injury or anything because if you're present and engaged you'll know if your body needs something different. We'll stay one more here seeing if you want to make a little progress. And then bring yourself back up. We'll set up that counter pose so now right hand goes behind fingers point away left arm stretches out over that left leg and use an inhale to enter the pose as you're ready with an inhale lift up through the hips lift up through the heart follow the hand as it reaches up and over i'm limited a little bit because the wall is right here hopefully you can get a full stretch and then slowly come back down bringing your right knee up wrapping your left arm around that knee giving it a hug in which is going to help you keep that nice straight spine Right hand still behind you for support. Take your twist, looking over your right shoulder. Shoulders are soft and down, so the neck is nice and open. Lots of room. And the breath does the rest of the work. Deep breaths. Inhale, filling up, feeling that extra squeeze. Exhales, releasing. Let's stay one more breath. Taking a little time in this twist. Again, letting the pose do the job that the pose is designed for. And then when you're ready, we'll unwind back center. And from here, we're gonna roll down onto our backs. Make sure uh, we're coming up where we might need that block. So um, if you can get that in reaching distance now, just so you don't have to move too much when we get to that posture. Uh, slowly roll yourself down onto your back and we're going to set up for an exercise called cannonball bridge. I love this exercise. I love how it feels. It's strength, but we're going to move in and out of it. So it's nice light building strength. So the way to get into this cannonball bridge 
is to bend your knees, setting up for a bridge pose in the lower body. Feet are hip distance apart, feet are pointed forward, taking a moment to make sure your spine is nice and relaxed on the floor. But then we're gonna end, we're gonna stretch the arms up overhead. The arms are just resting down on the ground and the back is relaxed. This is our start position and this is our inhale position. So when you're ready with an inhale, take an inhale here. And as you exhale, we move into cannonball. So exhale, start to lift the feet, curl the body up, point the fingers towards the feet, tuck the chin. Inhale back to the start, feet lower, arms back overhead, and exhale into bridge pose. Arms go along the sides of the body, hips lift up, shoulders press down. And then inhale back to the start. So that's cannonball bridge. That's one. We're going to do five. When you're ready, exhale, cannonball, chin tucks. Inhale back to the start. Exhale, bridge. Press down through the shoulders, through the arms. Lift the hip, hips, find that edge for that lift. Inhale back to the start. That's two. Exhale, cannonball. Inhale to the start. Exhale, bridge. That's three. Inhale to the start. Exhale, cannonball. Inhale to the start. Exhale, bridge. Take your time. One more. Inhale to the start. Exhale, cannonball. Maybe six seconds this time. Linger a little bit. Get that belly to work and strengthen. Inhale to the start. And exhale to bridge. And then inhale, slowly lower the hips down. And just take a moment. Feel the spine resting on the floor, relaxing. Effort to ease, taking a moment. Our next pose is going to be the windshield wiper twist. So we're going to bring the feet to the outer edges of the mat. Toes tap off the mat, heels stay on the mat. So you have a nice wide foot stance. Arms can go into the T position and you're gonna let the knees drop over to the right for a windshield wiper twist. Shoulders stay relaxed down. Your hip will probably come off the ground a little bit. And you wanna take a deep breath, let the knees and the legs get heavy. Just see where your body wants to go in this pose for a moment. Releasing the hip flexor and the quad. And then roll back center, keeping that wide foot stance. Let the knees drop over to the left. Taking a deep breath, letting the legs get heavy. And then when you're ready, slowly roll back center. Bring the feet back in line with the hips. With an inhale, take a centering stretch, reaching the arms up overhead, stretching and reaching. And with your exhale, relax your arms down along your sides and slide the right foot up the inside of the left leg. And then drop the right knee open. So you're in a reclining tree posture. Now take a deep breath here and let the hips get heavy. Let that knee drop open. Take the time to relax and feel the relaxation of this posture. And then we're going to point that knee, so right knee points up to the ceiling. Interlock your hands behind that thigh and gently start to extend the legs straight. Now it may not straighten out all the way and, and you may need to keep the knee bent more. That's fine. Do whatever feels right, but we're going to add that hamstring stretch in one more time because we're just about to the end of this practice. Now you can flex the foot here. You can spread the toes, get a little extra awareness and release throughout the foot. Maybe a circle at the ankle, both directions. Taking a moment here. See if that leg wants to come back any farther. And then we're going to bend at the knee. Placing the left hand on the right knee, draw that knee over to the left side. 
Right arm stretches right out from the shoulder, straight out from the shoulder, and then turn the head to look out at the right hand. This is knee down twist, so the knee's over to the left, head looks to the right. One more breath here. And then unwind back center and take a centering stretch. Let an inhale, reach your arms up, legs long, check out your alignment, and then exhale, arms go back along the sides of your body and slide the left foot up for that reclining tree pose. So the foot slides up the inside of the leg, knee drops open, taking a moment here to relax through the hips, letting go of any tension tightness that's lingering in this part of your body. This practice, this stretch and relax video, I have others, focuses a little bit more on the inner thighs and the hip muscles. But we might have a little tension left, so just one more chance to let it go. And then bring that knee up, interlock your hands behind the left thigh, start to straighten the leg wherever that wants to go. Maybe flexing the foot, spreading the toes, get a little release throughout the foot and toe area, maybe a circle around the ankle. Just an opportunity with the leg in this position to also work those parts of the body. Small parts tend to get overlooked a lot. We wanna give them some attention. And then draw that leg back maybe a little bit more, getting a little bit more release on that hamstring. And then we'll bend that knee. Right hand crosses over the knee, left arm extends out, draw the knee over to the right side turning the head to look out at the left hand. So it's that knee down twist, a nice twist and release through the mid body, a good spine ring out. I love doing reclining twists at the end of any yoga practice. Nice deep breath. And when you're ready, slowly unwind back center. With an inhale, take a centering stretch, reaching arms up and legs long. And with your exhale, relax your arms along the sides of your body. And we'll take a moment here to check in, mindfully softening the space around your eyes. Let your eyes rest in their sockets and your brain in its skull. Let all facial expression melt away as you release your jaw, relaxing the muscles of the neck and throat, across the chest and shoulders, out the arms to hands and fingers. And allow the back side of the body to sink into the floor, from the shoulders down the spine to the hips, from the hips down the legs to the heels. And give yourself this moment of mind-body integration Allow yourself to become deeply aware of a feeling of relaxation throughout your body that's a result of your effort in this practice today, moving in and out of spaces, letting go of tension and tightness. Now feel free to stay here as long as you like, but this is where we shall end this practice today. Thank you for practicing with me in this stretch and relax class. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you.